How do we submit to and pray for our government when our government may be working against Christianity in specific areas or is maybe even hostile to Christianity? I'm Pastor Brian. This is Redeeming Life Q&A. And the question I have, which is a lot more detailed than that, essentially is this. How do Christians obey, say, Romans 13, for example, or uh, 1 Timothy? How do we how do we submit to our government and pray for our government when our government might be doing things that, that are hostile to Christianity or hostile to Christ? How do we still faithfully serve the Lord in those difficult areas? Well, let's, let's first remember that when Paul wrote the words uh, in Romans 13, let everyone submit to the governing authorities since there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are instituted by God. Let's remember that when he wrote these words, submit to the government, he didn't have a Bill of Rights that he was living under. He didn't have the right to vote. Uh, he didn't have many of the, the wonderful blessings that at least us in America have that many people even around the world don't have. And even today, governments are persecuting Christianity, and yet he still has this text in his work. God has given us this, and we're called to do that. Obviously, within certain parameters, because if you go to, say, the book of Daniel, you see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, not bowing down to an idol, and prepared to face the consequences of that government that might execute them. And obviously they would follow through. They threw him into a burning furnace, and you probably know the story there. Daniel, who was told he couldn't pray to anybody but the king, and he prayed to God, and he was thrown in a lion's den, and God closed the lion's mouth. God doesn't save many, many, many of the martyrs, and they actually become a witness for Christianity. Case in point, Polycarp, or many others. How do we submit to this? Well, I think we have to just measure when it when what we're doing goes against God's law, then it would cause us to sin, then we really can't submit to that. Uh, many of the things we're asked to do or not to do aren't an outright sin against God's law. You wouldn't have a clear scripture to point to. On occasion, there is some scripture you can point to, and in some people in some countries, that's much more the case. Canada doesn't have a Bill of Rights. During the pandemic, they had a bunch of issues, and a lot of the pastors there determined, hey, this is this is causing us now to, to sin. We're not going to be gathering for years or whatever the case may be. California had some of those issues. Other states had some of those issues. So you have to ask yourself, am I violating God's instruction to me that will cause me to sin against God if I do the thing the government's asking me? But if not, then we're called to submit to those authorities because God instituted them and whatnot. That doesn't mean it's just a, a blanket statement. You have to use appropriate judgment and trust upon the Holy Spirit, which brings me, I think, to the second part of this answer, and that is pray. I mean, like pray and, and pray and, and pray and ask the Lord, how do I do this? And Holy Spirit, help me. And we're also called uh, to pray for those leaders. First Timothy chapter 2 says, first of all, I urge then uh, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in godliness and dignity. And uh, this is good, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So we're called to pray for those leaders. And people say, well, I don't want to, what am I praying for, that everything they want they get? No, 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 no. I think if you have uh, leaders, and we have these in our country, that are not Christians, and they don't submit to the word of the Lord, that it's very reasonable we would pray that their eyes would be open, that they would be saved, that they would follow the Lord, that they'd be people of good character and honest and, and full of uh, integrity. At the same time, we see prayers that the truth would come out. So if we think there's corruption and scandal, that we pray that the truth would come out. Uh, I was just preaching out of Second Chronicles chapter 20, and I would highly encourage you to look at that from 17 through 20. Really fascinating stuff. Uh, King Jehoshaphat has three armies coming against him. He does not know what to do. He prays, right? We could do that too. And, and he, he goes out to battle, but God causes uh, two of the armies to wipe out another one. And then those two armies fight each other. And it says that uh, that they helped in their own destruction and nobody escaped. So down to the very last man, uh, all of them were wiped out and, and God fought the battle in front of his people, so they didn't have to fight the battle. I think it would be reasonable to pray that God would confuse the efforts of these ungodly situations, and he would work in this situation, so maybe uh, his ways would prevail. We don't have all the answers, but God does. So pray for your leaders in that way, 
that even in these upcoming election, that he would put the appropriate leaders in place, that he would confuse those who are coming against the church, that maybe they would, maybe the enemies of the church would attack each other and not the church. That would be a, a very fascinating circumstance, right? I think we can be praying in those ways that are still very godly, and yet we're still asking the Lord to intervene, we're humbling ourselves, we're submitting to the government appointed over us, uh, trusting that God has a hand in that. Yes, it's going to be tough. And I think in this upcoming election season, it's going to get even harder. And we're going to be tempted to just want to like curse everything and just bleh, and blow it all up and burn it to the ground or whatever, because it, it's it's hard to watch the, the debates and people getting angry and the things that various people are doing and even those that are hostile against the church. But we're called as Christians to trust upon the Lord and pray. And so to answer your question, how do we deal with this? We submit when we can, when we're not called to sin, and we pray our faces off. So that's my encouragement to you. I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions, you can text them to our church line, 385-368-6665. You can reach out to us. You can email us. You can come to a church service and ask me directly. But I would love to try to help answer the questions that you're asking and maybe we can have a continued dialogue.